Please note, this video is not about which open source digital FPV option is better. It is to show results of my testing with my preferred configuration on my hardware. Your experiences may differ depending on many factors. All digital FPV footage shown in this video has been recorded on an Android 12 phone. As OpenHD is optimized for Raspberry Pi playback, the results of direct playback via HDMI goggles would be much better. WFB NG2 could be made to work better on other hardware. However, the Android phone is a device with the best screen I have and it is what I use to display digital FPV video. And now you are seeing my Raspberry Pi Zero uh, W2 based uh, air unit uh, and my first attempts at uh, mounting the camera uh, followed by my current V2 uh, camera mount. But let's go straight to the video now. The first video is WFB NG. It's a collection of clips uh, from about three flights. Uh, you will soon see uh, a display showing the CPU and GPU of the Android phone uh, to give you an idea of uh, how much resources we are leaving on the table and how much better this could look, perhaps. Uh, in general, it's running pretty well. Uh, there's a little bit of latency, uh, feels like 100, 120 milliseconds at most. Uh, for gentle flying uh, it's fine but definitely not good enough for proper freestyle <laughs> or, or racing. No, it's not good for racing. Uh, I've included a clip to show how it looks like when the connection is lost, uh, which you will see in a moment. Uh, basically it's getting worse and worse and suddenly it's gone uh, there, there's very little warning uh, you will see this clip now uh, we are behind the building uh, where we are losing the connection right now and it's gone and now it's the final landing almost successful now we see the open HD video as you can see, it looks slightly worse, but uh, what you can't tell is that the latency is a little bit better. Unfortunately, it is inconsistent, it, which makes flying a bit difficult, um, especially slightly dynamic flying is, is more than difficult. Those little stutters you can see, this is exactly how it's looking on my phone screen. This is not an artifact of transcoding or anything. In general, I'm a little bit more confident flying with OpenHD because I have the RSSI in the left top corner. Uh, I know exactly how far I can fly because when this goes to minus 70, 73, I know I'm a little bit too far. So this gives me a measure of uh, being able to, to turn around before it drops. I'm showing this now. I'm flying behind the building now. And as you can see, it's minus 67, it will go to minus 73, and now I can turn back and it will deteriorate a little bit, uh, or maybe this is not visible here. And it's minus 70, but I'm, I can still fly and uh, recover it, basically. And this is again a part of uh, normal flight. Uh, those digital systems, they are great if you want to fly between tree branches, wires, 
anything tiny that you wouldn't be able to see on an analog feed. I can't wait to test it in the forest. This is 2.4 GHz, so it should have pretty good penetration between trees and it should be great. Uh, we're getting to the end of this video. The next one will be an analog video. Um, I consider my analog setup to be pretty good, so you can basically see and compare what kind of uh, quality of picture and, uh, and frame rate is there on a typical analog setup. And what kind of flying it allows you to do when there is such little latency. hit a leaf there but it managed fine now the quality is pretty much uh, in in the box goggles the quality is what you can see here but those breakups I, I don't notice them while I'm flying so I don't think they happen I think this is an artifact of DVR So if you would like to uh, see something more about the hardware, about the setup uh, or some comparisons of, uh, of cameras for example, uh, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, bye.